Hey, it's me, Christopher from B BBG. <laughs> Unboxing time. Let's have a look, set up, see how we go. That's right, from the title you gather that I finally got a resin printer. Um, managed to save, sell some armies, sell some scenery from um, what I did on my Enter 3. All for this. I've never played with resin before, but I've watched so many videos from so many different YouTubers that I feel I can do it. I feel that you can do it. And this is basically going to be my resin journey from printing noob to printing not so noob. <laughs> That's basically it. So we're going to open up this. This is a satin too that I bought from Wayland Games. No discount or promotional um, from them, but I think it's always good to recognise where you've got your products from. So let's open it up. That's standing knife. Um, I can only assume that this is the right way up because of the label, but it would have been nice to have something on the side or something just to say this way up. Because the postman didn't really know when they dropped it off. Um, so let's have a look. Let's unplug it, let's get it all out, and let's get a print done as well. That is what we're going to see. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Let me know what printers you've got, if you've got any. And what you're looking forward to most in the printing community, join quite a lot of Facebook groups at the moment, and all of them are being really supportive, um, <laughs> really nice, you know, it's always sharing files, but definitely giving pointers on settings, which is a huge part of resin printing rather than um, sort of plastic printing. Oh, it ordered two washable. Um, water washable resins because um, I want to get started. I've got some plastic and um, some standard grey anyway. Um, and I've got a washer and cure station from 3D Jake, um, the XC, XS or S, something like that, um, which is a cure separate and a wash station separate. So um, we thought that was the way to go and actually by looking at all the reviews and other products I thought yes definitely. So random rubbish that my boys will absolutely love. It's a box in a box. One box my boys are gonna love. Just got rid of two boxes that were the Kuro station. That's you know, quite well secured. Um, I ordered from LD before. Um, Everything's really well packaged. There's the foam, which is something I always appreciate. UK plug as well, which is brilliant, so if you do order. Um, at least it's this and that from Elgu. From um, Elgu, normally it comes as European 
Um, so that's brilliant. I don't need to buy an adapter. Uh, 3D shape, put a free adapter in. You can see, hardened cars, hard phone, back in. I'd normally say it'd be used for scenery. That's why I'm printing, after all. Your plastic fits there. Base. Uh, instructions, important. The leveling card, which a lot of people in the community just say, don't use this, it's too thick. And there has been some um, instructions from Elgu as well saying that they say it's best to use a paper, but do your research, do what you feel is right. Is a lot bigger <laughs> than what I thought. It's definitely it's taller than the Saturn. Um, it's got a big build plate than the Saturn. The Saturn, the new Saturn that's coming out with 8K, it's very little difference apart from height. Um, I want to be printing um, terrain that's quite durable, quite high. So this is why I've gone for the Saturn 2. Um, the other reason is I want to do a, a lot of my tournaments always themed. So we've seen like the Tau boards, the Tyranid board, the Orc board, for example, they're all really well themed. I want to do a destroyed world that something bad went on and it is just full of titans that are all destroyed in some way, that are all bash free buildings um, so height is going to be important for getting those that built yeah arguably you could you could chop them and print them in sections but there's less going through software to do some editing in that way I'd rather just get straight on to the printing so this is the reason why um, and the new Saturn, Saturn with 8K is not out. And I didn't really want to do the 4K Saturn. Um, I wanted to future proof myself, even though the rate of way, the rate of 3D printers and design is going massively at the moment. gentle as I can with it. It's a bit hard to when it's just heavy. This isn't obviously where it's going to be set up. I think I'll show you where I'm going to be setting it up in a bit. package that is inside. Put the toolkit, sections, fill plate there, and obviously where the resin goes as well. Huge. 
for saying that. It's, it doesn't really measure anything, does it? We'll get more things out and we'll go through that. And the cook toolkit itself, you get a six spatula, which to be fair, you can print your own. Um, if you want to endure free or order some, they're created quite cheap online anyway. Got the carbon air filter, stays in the back there. There's a plug, it is, looks like a USB plug, but it is not for anything else other than this. I wouldn't risk it. Um, good to get rid of the smells. Some people say the wash, washable resin is really smelly. Other people say they can't really smell it at all. Um, other people say the normal resin is just really smelly anyway. Um, so it's up to you. I think the more you use it, the probably you get used to it. Um, got loads of Allen keys. And spare bolt. Plug. Some not very good masks. Not masks. Filters. Oh, they're quite cool. Gloves. The same masks. And two masks. Glove, masks, filters, it's all something you're going to need to buy extra. There's not enough here to, to really, um, you know, to, to last for your resin needs. Um, but they're definitely to get started on that as well. Um, nail spatula, I'm really not using these, but they are needed sometimes. Um, I prefer using plastic just because I don't want to put any damages on the plate but you can you can scuff the plate quite a bit um, before it becomes unusable um, by looking at some some people's plates um, but I wouldn't recommend it as you know as much as you can and the standard USB I'm not too sure on the size, we'll find out later. Um, but this should have the standard Elgoo test print on as well. Um, I've been told these are not really that good and it's best to replace them. So once I find a size out of this, I might go up. I'm not too sure what the size this can take. Um, we'll find out. But power wise, power's on the back, which is great. Uh, that on your setup, um, on buttons on the front, and USB stick is on the left side. Wasn't it on the right? Was it? No. So I prefer the USB stick at the front. I, mean, I don't need to go round, um, but in my workstation, I've got plenty of space for that purpose because I knew it was on the side. Um, that's just design, you know. So. Not for everyone. Um, absolutely loads of this hard foam. Um, I know the boys play with that tomorrow and they're going to enjoy it. Um, but I think it just looks like it, you know, it's, it's a solid machine. That's the best way of doing it. You know, they're packed so much in this. It is heavy, which is good. It feels durable. It doesn't feel cheap. I've experienced with other printers in the past, um, but it feels good. Let's get the top on. We'll see if I have the plate in. Just do it for aesthetics. That's massive. It's so much bigger than what I thought. Um, it's got an M um, bit at the back, 
you could hand keys. Yeah, hand keys so you can screw that off so you've got a little bit more ventilation in there. It's just huge. Um, it's absolutely huge. It says the net weight of it is 11 kilograms. Uh, machine size is 305.9 times 2 uh, times not two, times 273 times 567.3 millimeters. Um, these translated between Chinese and European uh, and English. So it's something just to consider. Um, if you're from other languages, then I don't know, it could be a little bit more difficult. But I think it's, it's pretty universal all the way through. I'm going to move this into the setup, but let's get a print going and see what it's like. But do um, let me know what you actually you think of everything. Um, is there any particular models you want to see printed? Um, do you want to see time lapse videos? That is the aim I want to do. Um, I'm not too sure if time lapse videos are going to work watching it um, through the red. Um, which is to stop the UV coming through. Um, admittedly, in my gaming room, it is incredibly dark and there's no natural light coming through anyway. Uh, I've got blackout curtains and loads of, and I haven't got any windows in there now, um, or they're all um, plaster boarded up. Um, so there's no natural light coming through. Um, just, to, you know, and the curtains are there just purely to make sure, completely make sure that it's there isn't any natural light coming through. The only thing I've got is you know, a fluorescent light, so it shouldn't affect it at all. So I think time lapse videos with the case off will work really well, um, but let us know what you think. So I have a minute, pleasure of technology. We're going to jump into the game room with this all unplugged, uh, um, all, plum, unplugged. all plugged up, and go from there. So, moment of truth. We've got all the bits peeled off. There was a bit on the glass and a bit to peel on the vat as well. And there was a bit to peel off the plate. So we're going to move this up, get the plate installed, do a levelling test and go from there. But let's see it turn on first. That into El Goo. Oh. A bit of sound, but I can deal with that. Definitely nothing compared to um, the end of three. Um, yeah, the end of three that I got. So we've got loads of different things. So system, system info, languages, service, and home. A nice touch screen compared to what I'm used to using, which is on the Endo 3. And it's quite nice. Got tools where obviously is a tank clean, which then um, produces a film of resin that you can peel off at the bottom. Stop, obviously, stop what you're doing. Um, Setting zero, so basically leveling, exposure test, and your manual, so you everything, and then print, which will be should be nothing in there because that's when your USB goes in, be able to show it in that. So we can do manual, and we're gonna lift up this um, to get it all sorted. I always like to do a test first to make sure it goes all the way up. Just to see if there's anything wobbling or anything like that really. Nice and simple.
yeah, it takes a bit of time, but it's nice just to see the overall build to make sure everything's moving correctly. You know, if there's any problems that you need to find out, it's a good time to find it out early so you can take it back if necessary or get a refund or contact. And that's it going too high up. I'm just pushing that bit up. So let's go down. There is some limits of where it can go, so it's a shame they don't have something automated there. Um, just the noise of going, no, nope, we don't like this. Um, one settings, it doesn't say where, how high it currently is either, which should be would have been quite nice as well. But let's get the build plate loaded in, and we'll go from there. So the build plate is in, and it it feels chunky. Yeah, feel solid, feel secure. These are huge for an Allen key. Um, what you do is loosen them each. You go slowly loosen each one, and then it will move left to right and forward and back as well. And you want this because this is when you want to level it, level it down, and then you tighten it up. So I'm going to loosen them, and I'll show you what I mean. So now it's all loosened, and you see it's moving back and forth and what happens is it has a spring and you'll see when they're a little bit looser you can do them by hand here it gives them a real freedom of movement so what happened it was lower it down I want to use the leveling card just to experiment to see what would be better so we're going to lower it down get it leveled and go from there so it's looking on the Elgu site and looking at things in that the card is not the best way to do but I want to show it first and so I can review it because only the pack and the Elgu leveling page says to do this first so and there's loads of people commenting going please use an A4 can we update this Elgu can you confirm no one's really suggesting that from Elgu officially that I can see but so let's do leveling plate on the construction on the instructions so we go to manual and then we press home and it will slowly come down this is all loose so we can level it so once it once it's down we're gonna press on there do the bolts and go from there So excited about using a 3D printer, or oh, resin 3D printer anyway. And the free, don't get jealous. Okay, so it's down. Going to do bolts up and go from there. So it's all leveled, and I've set zero. What they suggest is this should be some resilience, some resilience, some resistance, sorry, with a paper. It should be able to move. Um, if there is no, none at all, then you need to um, almost do it again. Um, if there is none at all, then I think, and then you can go manually up and adjust it that way, is the best way. So let's go up a bit. Oh, we can take the paper off. There we go. And I'd say the instructions are quite clear on the on the on the card as well. Um, and everything suggests using this, but obviously, I think it's all about trial and error. Um, most important thing so I'm going to get this up put my vat in um, if I keep pressing it how <laughs> far I've gone up it's going up by 10 mil each time um, probably should change that so it doesn't I should not <laughs> go up all the way again but that is the simplest way to level it like I said leveling is a one of the most common problems 
in printing um, whether it is resin whether it is plastic printer I know so many people that have problems with endo 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 freeze and um, and things like that I, I don't um, that often because I tend to re-level all the time um, so I'm constantly checking it because I know it just affects prints so again is exactly the same with resin you don't need to check it all the time because there's a lot more solid um, but if you're having fails that's probably your first step to go so I'm going to put the vat in and then we're going to get some resin in there and then we're going to test out the first print so got the water washable resin it was quite quick um, to get it and quite cheap so and as you can see I've got the test print of the castle or rook however you want to describe it or use it but just the test print that comes standard I changed the USB um, because it's been loads of people saying that actually you can go bigger so and those people using like 32 gig or um, or 64 so I thought well I'm gonna try that um, so tip definitely shake <laughs> and shake and shake and shake a little bit more of your resin before pouring in nice and simple hopefully when we come back we'll see a couple photos of the print as it's going and the finished result it's going in Let's see what's going to happen. Let's see, because the description, bit little picture on the bottom, what it's going to be doing. A bit bubbly on top, I don't know if that is normal for everyone, but you know, nice know. I'm definitely below the max line. Um, don't want to go too much, especially just doing the rook. You can hear the fep. Slight bit of release. Let's come back and we'll see what it's like a halfway through or something like that, maybe. So we are 69%. It's so much different than working with the Endo 3 because you can tell when it is um, turning on the ultraviolet light, which is when the blue part comes up, and that's basically the layer line that it's doing. And we can see it raising. This is at the bottom. Up. There we go, and going back down. Seems to all be going well. All standard settings at the moment. We're at layer 100, uh, 702 out of 1000, and we have an hour remaining. It's getting quite late here, so I'm going to leave it. I think I've put enough resin in there. We'll find out. It's really just testing still, but standard stock settings. Everything's being seems to be going well. See how it goes, and then by morning, I have a clean and a cure. So we have finished our print. I mean, it's looking pretty crisp. Looks very liquidy, which is what you expect coming from liquid resin. Gonna take it down, clean it off. Very important, have a bit of a station ready. So kitchen towel and a tray and silicon max is what I've got. So I can bring it down take it off there and then blitz it through there 
let's plan our action. So here we are curing. Done two minutes for this model. It was a bit hard to work out how long you should cure. I did five minutes in um, in the wash station. And it seemed to get all the tackiness off. So two minutes for this. I think it sends a good standard of one minute to two minutes a model. Um, let's see what this is like. I think it's printed pretty well. Um, but let me know when we do a final photo. So here is the Satin 2 Rook. I've zoomed in as much as I possibly can and still keeping in focus on my camera. You can see there's a little bits on it. Probably just need a bit of cleaning like I normally do with quite a lot of resin from Forge Weld for example. And that is just get a brush. But I am really happy with the detail. That's, a, you know, that's the reality of how far I am away. So, you know, there's nothing to be shabby about. I am really impressed. I think I'm going to print something a bit bigger. Uh, we had some requests from my um, oldest son. Let's see if I can do him justice with something special. So I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry, it's taking a little bit longer than I wanted to get this video done. Um, but I've just been printing so much since I made this video. Um, but I wanted to get it finished. Mostly all of Station Forge's um, Grim Guard, I think that's what they've used. Pretty much printed 2,000 points worth of that since I've got my printer. Um, be sure to check it out. Please like, subscribe, all of that. I'm going to get some review videos of all their prints and show you what I've done. Um, I've also joined their Patreon. No, not have their Patreon. I've joined their tribe, which is the mini, my mini factory. And yeah, they look really good. So I'm going to start printing what they release monthly um, and do reviews on them if you like that sort of thing. Um, also going to add into a giveaway because I have some Primark busts to do, um, so please check out that. Um, that'll be probably after Christmas that drops, thinking I'll have like a New Year um, giveaway. Set yourself a new project, printing um, by painting a bus of a Primark, I think would be quite cool as a giveaway. So let us know, please like, subscribe, all of that jazz, and check out more videos to come. It's going to be quite a lot more printing. A lot more armies to see. Really looking forward to it. Thanks again.